Hello. In the next few weeks, I shall be talking a little bit about automatic speech recognition, in which the computer takes in an audio signal of someone talking, processes it, and attempts to recognise what is being said, and sometimes the identity of the speaker saying it. I won't be covering the subject completely, or even, I suspect, doing it justice. So, as with any of the topics I cover, don't be surprised if I return to the subject in talks at some time in the future. Today's talk covers how we might get an audio signal into the computer in a form that a JavaScript program can recognise. After all, JavaScript is the raison d'etre of this entire channel. Now, at this point, I have to issue a spoiler alert. The initial processing of the signal is something we really can't do in JavaScript. You see, JavaScript is designed to control and update HTML web pages, not for processing data in files. That's why in projects up to now, whenever you've had to get data into or out of the program, it's always been necessary to faff about copying it and pasting it into a text area. That works on data that can be represented by printable characters, such as ASCII, but not the raw numbers that we're going to be dealing with today. I'll be explaining a small code snippet in today's video, but it won't be JavaScript. It'll be in C++, a language with proper file processing facilities. I just wanted you to know that in case you wanted to bail early on this video. Problem. Virtually all software that you use out there for recording audio on your computer stores it in its own proprietary format. What we want is simple binary data values so we can start doing some processing on it. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at this small section of an audio signal. The input starts off as analog, which means it slides smoothly from one level to another. Computers aren't good with analog signals. Signals in computers are stored as digital signals, which means that they can only take certain values, typically the binary values of 0 and 1. This graph shows the voltage produced by the signal being measured at regular intervals, referred to as the sampling rate, and each sample being approximated to the nearest fixed level. The red circles show the points where the signal is sampled, and you will see that they are evenly spaced horizontally, representing the unchanging sampling rate. Inside the computer, these values are represented as binary numbers, of course. Typically, the number of levels is a power of 2, so there might be 256 of them, or 1024 of them, and so on. The more fixed levels you have, and the higher the sampling rate, then the more accurately you can represent the audio signal at the expense of a large number of data samples that you will need to store. A file of such data values is referred to in the audio processing world as raw data, and such files are usually stored with a file extension RAW. Every audio program that I've come across has its own way of storing audio as raw data. I use two of them on a regular basis, Audacity for sound recording, and WavePad by NCH for processing what I've recorded. Here's a sample signal open in Audacity. It is, in fact, me saying good evening for an animation I'm creating for my other channel. It's generally a good idea to keep the signals you turn into raw format quite short to avoid the whole process taking an age and a half. The signal is currently in stereo. You could save it in raw data format as it is, but the two signals will be interleaved on a byte per byte or double byte per double byte basis. It's perfectly possible to process it as such, but it's a lot less hassle to save it as a mono signal. This is the time to consider the sampling rate, which you can see at the bottom left of the screen. If you want to reduce the file size, you might want to reduce this. There is a law in signal processing that if you want to capture every frequency present in the mixture of frequencies that make up your signal, your sample frequency must be at least twice the highest frequency present in the signal. If it's the human voice that you're recording, then the higher the voice, the higher this maximum frequency will be. A female voice typically goes up to about 17 kilohertz, or 17,000 hertz, so you would need a sampling rate of at least 34 kilohertz, i.e. 34,000 samples per second. A male voice typically goes up to about 8 kilohertz, so you would need a much lower sampling rate of at least 16,000 samples per second to capture a male voice. It's horses of courses, of course, but the higher the sampling rate, the larger the file size. Now select Export Audio from the File menu. This will bring up the standard Save dialog box. Before you save the file, make sure you select Raw 
headerless as the header option to make sure that no extra header data is added to the file. Also select unsigned 8-bit PCM as the encoding option. PCM is pulse code modulation, and it's the technical name for the raw audio that I explained above. Before the actual save, Audacity gives you the chance to specify metadata, such as author, date of recording, and so on. I never bother with that bit. Now there's one major implication of choosing raw headerless, and that means that no extra data is put at the beginning of the file. This means that the sampling rate of the signal, whether the signal is 8-bit or 16-bit, and whether it's signed or unsigned or whatever, is not recorded and is lost when you exit the program. Best to make a note of this information separately on creating the file. I've talked about signed and unsigned data, and this is what they mean. Unsigned data gives the lowest possible level that the signal can reach, the level number zero. The levels are numbered one, two, three, and so on, above that, up to the maximum, which is 255, if you specified 8-bit unsigned data. This is the maximum number that can be represented using eight binary digits. Signed data, on the other hand, uses those same eight binary bits and assigns them differently. Here, level zero is the middle one, and the levels above it are numbered 1, 2, 3, etc., as before, giving the top level as 127, which is the largest number that can be represented using seven binary digits. The most significant bit is reserved to indicate the sign of the number, so that if it's set to 1, that represents negative numbers. Using this, levels below the middle one are numbered minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, down to minus 128. Signed data can't represent any more numbers than its unsigned equivalent, given a fixed number of binary digits, but it allows half of them to be negative. It will be similar if you chose 16-bit data rather than 8-bit. Unsigned data would range from 0 to 65,535. Signed data from minus 32,768 to plus 32,767. It's slightly easier if you use WavePad. Select Save File As from the File menu. When the Save dialog box appears, select Raw Audio as the file type. The last stage before the saving is where you specify the encoding type, whether you want stereo or mono, and the sampling rate. Then click on Save and you get your file. Easy. The trouble is that 8-bit unsigned raw data or signed 16-bit raw data, for that matter of fact, can't be read the way you can with normal text or anything else, like numbers represented in text form. If you try to open it in a text editor, you get gobbledygook like this. What you're looking at is Notepad's best attempt at showing 8-bit numbers characters. We need a special program that will convert that into a human readable form. Now, try as I might, I simply can't get a JavaScript program to do that. The problem lies in getting that data into the program. It can't be simply copied from Notepad and pasted into a text area on an HTML page. That's why I had to resort to a language that is more suitable for file processing, one capable of reading the contents of a file, one 8-bit number at a time. My choice was C++, but you've probably got your own favourite. Here's my C++ program. I should point out that there are so many flavours of C++ out there that your version might not look exactly like this. Treat this more as pseudocode rather than a fully running program and rewrite it for your language or flavour of C++ as necessary. The include fstream statement at the top allows file access and two files are set up. bin in is the input file set up using ifstream and txt out is the output text stream. It's necessary to specify that bin in will contain binary data, hence the elaborate instruction to set it up. Variables C and TMP are unsigned characters, which is how you specify 8-bit unsigned numbers in C++. C holds the byte values as they are read in from the file, and TMP holds the individual digits as they are stretched from the beginning of C. C is tested to see if there's a hundred digits. If so, TMP becomes that digit, and C loses it through modular arithmetic. Then the procedure is repeated for the tens digit. If there is one, TMP becomes that, and C loses it. The digits that are taken off the values are added to a string, 
stored in string variable s. Finally, the digits in s are written out to the text file, followed by a comma to separate the numbers. And the whole thing is repeated for every byte in the input file, by looping round and round until the end of file mark was triggered, the function eof. It's tempting to bypass the use of variable tmp, but specifying it as an unsigned char means that the division is forced to give a whole number as a result. You don't want any decimal numbers written out to the file. You will also notice that after the last number in the output file, there will be a trailing comma. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, though. Also note that the text file will be considerably larger than the raw data file, as each byte of data becomes anywhere from two to four characters of data including those commas. So there you are. Rather unsatisfactory, I admit. But if you're going to get your data into any format which JavaScript can do anything with, you're going to have to do something similar. Real audio processing hardware and software are designed to process the speech in real time as it comes into the microphone. Are we going to achieve that using JavaScript? No way. No chance. But these videos are designed more as a proof of concept rather than anything practical. If you want to do anything realistic in the world of artificial intelligence, you almost certainly wouldn't use JavaScript to do it. And on that rather dismal note, I shall end. Next week, I'll start showing you some of the things we can do with that audio signal that you've just captured.